Okay, so now we're back on exercise one. And we start from this function, and I just renamed it to version three so that we can do a few changes. And my objective is to notice that we now have a bit of a redundancy here, right? So first thing we notice is, look, the upper bound that we have here always remains the same, right? It, it never changes. But it is being passed from x to here. So my question is, could we make, could we simplify this function to remove this redundancy? Right? So this is the question. And maybe try to pause the video and think about uh, the answer. How do you think we could achieve this? So, one thing we've learned in the last lesson, or we saw an example of, is that we can actually refer to variables that are defined outside. We saw that when we called functions uh, from one function calling the other, right, right here. So when we had uh, version one, where we had count calling, uh, sorry, count up calling count. Um, and we also saw an example of within a function, you can call something outside. So wouldn't it be possible for this upper bound to be referring to this X? Let's see what happens. So if I rename this, to be, sorry, I'm going to call this upper bound. So what I did was I re went ahead and I changed count so that it doesn't have an upper bound, so that it refers to the upper bound defined up in the parameter. So when I call count, now it only has one parameter, which is the lower bound. Now I should call it, I no longer need to pass this parameter around, because it was just being passed around, right? It wasn't being changed. So what we did, we just removed that parameter and refer instead to the outermost upper bound. Let's see if that works. Oops, uh, racket, count up, and we see that it does work, right? So let me do a mistake again. Let me do um, 10 just to see that the test fails. Okay, it is failing. So everything seems to be working properly. Okay, so this would be one way to simplify our code. We now no longer have two parameters when we don't need one. And this is only possible because we made the definition inside, right? So this inner function is able to access parameters of the outer function. You can change them though. The only thing you can do is you can shadow them, but you cannot mutate anything. So we've seen how to refactor the, the two to become this version. This is what we saw. Um, and now let's go for a summary. We, see, we saw that we can use nested functions to hide a function that is only used internally. We saw that nested, definition can refer def nested definitions can refer to variables defined outside of the scope of their definitions and that the last expression of a function's body is evaluated as the function's return value, but this we already knew. We saw multiple examples of these. So this would be, this is the last one, right? So this is, we have a definition, and only the last one, which is the call to count one, is what is being returned. Okay, so that is it. Next, we're gonna have another example. We're gonna measure performance, and we're gonna see how nested functions can help improving performance.